they are of mankind. They are those people who indulge in singing and in music to mislead people from the remembrance of Allah. This is what this ayah actually means. That they purchase this music and they indulge in singing and dancing and everything else that goes along with it. Why? To mislead men from the path of Allah. I.e. this is one of the tricks and one of the footsteps and one of the traps of shaitan. This is one of the ways that shaitan, he entraps these people. Now let's look at the hadith. The Prophet wasallam he said, Amongst my ummah, there will be those people who will permit zina. They will permit silk. They will permit alcohol. And they will also permit musical instruments. So if all of these things are haram, why then does the Prophet wasallam then mention music as well? The point here is this. He is saying amongst my ummah, a group of people, misguided people, lost people who are following their desires, they will come and they will permit these things. They will come and they will permit these things. Subhanallah. Ibn Masood radiallahu an, this great companion, he said, singing increases the heart in hypocrisy, just as water increases the vegetation. So just as you see the plant and it grows, Subhanallah, do not cause hypocrisy to grow in your heart the same way. Do not water your heart with hypocrisy, which is singing and music. And now, Ikhwani, in the 21st century, we have these so-called intellectuals and they come and they say, yes, music is permitted. Music is allowed. It calms you down, etc. And they call themselves intellectuals. By Allah, they are not intellectuals. Rather, they are the ones whom Allah says Allah. in their hearts is a disease and Allah has caused their disease to increase. Because they follow their own whims and their desires and they put the hadith of the Prophet wasallam to one side. They put the narrations to one side. They put the understanding of the companions to one side. These are a people who have left the way of the believers and rather they are just going upon this path which is going to lead them to destruction. Now let's look at some of the lyrics in the songs that our brothers and sisters listen to today. The first thing that we find in these, mu in these music, musical songs, etc. is that they encourage open fornication. They encourage open lewdness and you know this looseness that everything is okay. It's, it's fine. You can go and fornicate. You can go and do whatever you like. They talk about love and they talk about sex like it is nothing. And they are like animals. They are like animals and they will encourage you to be like animals. The fact is, you are becoming desensitized. Ikhwani, the second thing that these songs, they, uh, they encourage is drugs and alcohol. Subhanallah, how many of the rap and R&B songs are just based 90% around drugs and alcohol? Ikhwani, perhaps the most important thing, the most dangerous thing, these songs are full of words of kufr, full of words of disbelief. Other words of kufr in Bollywood songs, those brothers who watch, listen to Bollywood don't think that you're off the hook. We have women dancing and there's music and they're semi-naked. And what are they singing? Subhanallah, Subhanallah. Yes, Subhanallah amma yushrikun. Glory be to Allah above what you associate with him as partners. Why? Why are we as Muslims allowing this? Why are we watching it? Why do we have our children next to us and they are watching it? I want to mention something which I came across today and subhanallah, <coughs> it was very, very, it was a scary experience. It's this type of music which they call dubstep. And let me come and show you what it sounds like. So we went onto YouTube and we just typed in dubstep. Ikhwani, I clicked on one video and by Allah, I could only listen to 10 seconds because it felt like something was dragging my heart towards it. And I was so scared for my heart that I turned it off and I had to begin listening to Quran. Because this, it is disgusting, Ikhwani, the type of music that it is, this is no doubt an evil, evil thing from the weapons of shaitan. They are rooms which are just dedicated to dubstep. And if you walk in there, these rooms are dark. There is little lighting. Everybody in that room is in a trance and they are all using drugs. He will lose his mind and they will see, they will see that it was something, subhanAllah, like an ulterior, uh, ulterior reality. And know, Ikhwani, that the words of Allah, the Quran, and the words of shaitan, music, they cannot mix in the same heart. They no longer listen to Quran because they are listening to the nasheed. They are listening to the nasheed. 
and how many a person, how many people, they left music altogether and they came to Quran. And then Shaitan came and whispered to them. And then they started to listen to Nasheed. And it started with the Nasheed that there were no instruments. There was no backing music. And they are singing about good things. But then Shaitan came again. And then the music, musical instruments, they begin to come in. And now they have slipped full back into listening to music. I want to mention some of the fatawa, some of the religious rulings that some of the scholars have mentioned about this. Sheikh Saleh al fawzan Hafidhullah, he was asked about nasheeds which are sung, these songs which are sung without backing or instruments. And he says, we do not know any basis for them. They are innovations. And if they are attributed to Islam and they are called Islamic nasheeds, then this would mean that they have, they, that they must have been legislated in Islam. But rather, there is no basis for this. Briefly, we mentioned about nasheeds and how they have become now basically like music. Even though they may be singing one or two songs which bring you closer to Allah, but the vast majority in general, they are resembling the music of the non-Muslim.